Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the major mysteries in regards to our sun, something known as the Miyake events, named after this wonderful lady, Fusa Miyake, who originally discovered their existence only a few years ago, or roughly around a decade ago. And so in this video we're going to discuss exactly what these events represent, what they tell us about our sun, and what potential alternative explanations we can actually come up with in regards to what exactly causes all of this. And this is the important part. If these events are from our sun, it means that once in a while our sun can become ultra powerful. Way way more powerful than what you see right here, and way more powerful than the event we discussed in the previous video you can find in the description below. The event that was compared to the famous Carrington event, but in this case in the opposite direction from Earth. But I guess here it's important to understand how all of this is discovered and how the scientists usually learn about this, especially when it comes to various events that happened hundreds or even thousands of years ago. For the most part, all of this is done by studying various tree rings. And the older the tree or the older the wood, the deeper in time we can actually see. But how exactly does all of this work? Well, it's all about CO2. Carbon dioxide has carbon, but some carbon is slightly different from other carbon. Most carbon on Earth is carbon-12, some carbon is carbon-13, but a very small part of carbon is carbon-14. And in this case, carbon-14 is an exceptionally unique isotope. First of all, it's radioactive, its half-life is about 5700 years, but second of all, it's primarily generated as various highly charged particles and a lot of radiation from outer space strikes nitrogen in the upper atmosphere and converts it into carbon-14. And so because of this, it can actually serve as a kind of a measurement tool for basically the amount of radiation reaching our planet, specifically various cosmic rays, but also of course radiation coming from the sun itself. Here's what the exact reaction for all of this looks like, and it basically involves one atom of nitrogen and one neutron usually produced by various cosmic rays. On Earth, all of this usually happens anywhere between 9 to 15 kilometers in altitude, with carbon-14 then occasionally becoming CO2. And so in theory, more radiation from space means more carbon-14. And eventually all of this starts to accumulate inside trees, obviously through the process of photosynthesis. Although in this case trees don't really care if it's carbon-12, 13 or 14, they'll use anything. And as the trees grow and as they basically grow their rings, the amount of carbon-14 to carbon-12, the overall ratio, does actually change depending on the atmosphere. But it's never really too dramatic and never too different. As a matter of fact, even a powerful emission such as the Carrington event, for the most part, is more or less invisible in modern tree rings. Although ironically, a lot of trees from the last 60 or 70 years or so do have a slightly elevated carbon-14 levels. Today this is believed to be a result of human activity and a lot of earlier atmospheric nuclear tests. But even that is not really that different compared to some of the levels in the last few hundreds of years. Nevertheless, that Japanese researcher wanted to see if she can actually find something using some of the new modern techniques. And in this case, the focus was on the trees from Yakushima Island in Japan, with the main focus being on objects and trees over a thousand years old, specifically between the year 750 and 820 AD. And here she used a brand new technique known as accelerator mass spectrometry that was able to detect very minute changes in radiocarbon that was previously very difficult to do with other techniques. And while to everyone's surprise, she discovered something that nobody expected. There was a very unusual event that happened in the year 775, visible in this graph right here. This resulted in a publication back in 2012, with a paper you can find in the description below. And whatever caused this event, nothing similar was ever seen in any of the previous samples from any other tree. At first it wasn't clear what this was, but it was then confirmed to be real and detected in a lot of other trees and even in several ice samples. It essentially represented a sudden and unusual spike in carbon-14 that seemed to have happened in 775. But none of the ancient texts from any region, including China, seem to mention anything about anything. It seems to be only visible in the rings. And so, because it wasn't witnessed by anyone and nobody noticed it, it most likely was not a supernova, as all major supernova have generally been reported by at least one civilization around that time. And if it wasn't a supernova, what else could it be? Well, whatever it was, it dramatically changed the upper atmosphere of the planet for at least a year or possibly even longer. The elevated concentration of carbon-14 remained relatively high for at least a couple of years. And after the initial proposition, the only explanation was that maybe our sun did something really extreme. Maybe just like a lot of flares from, for example, red dwarfs, 
once in a while the sun was also able to create these ridiculously powerful flares or very powerful emissions that would dramatically change the atmosphere for at least a little bit. At least that was one of the initial explanations. Except then the scientists started to look around for more of these events and to date have discovered at least six. And that's six in the last 10,000 years. There was at least one more 200 years later in 993, one a thousand years before that in 663 BC and a few more a thousand years apart prior to that. And none of them was reported to be coincided with anything in outer space, at least supernova. A lot of ancient astronomers, such as the ones in China, were very good at reporting this. And so because so many have been discovered so far, these events are now known as the Miyake events, defined as an event that produces at least 20 times more carbon-14 than expected in a typical tree ring, which by itself has to come from something involving a lot of cosmic rays or potentially something else dramatic happening in outer space in order to suddenly produce a lot of carbon-14. And whatever this was, this definitely affected a lot of different trees around the planet. For example, by using one of these events, the one in 993, the scientists were able to discover the exact date when Vikings arrived to North America. It was basically visible in some of the wooden tools they used and left behind in places like Nova Scotia in Canada. And so by examining carbon-14 in those tools, the exact date was established pretty quickly. In case you're wondering, the year was 1021, or approximately 20 years later after the last Miyake event. But once again, no mention of anything by anyone as if nothing happened. So what exactly could cause this? Well, obviously, if it was some kind of a solar flare or a major emission from the sun, it's quite likely that it would be ignored by ancient people. As a matter of fact, their life would not be changed at all. But generally, when scientists try to explain various solar events, they focus on what's known as solar cycles. We know that generally, the sun goes through the ups and downs every 11 years, although some studies suggest that it's maybe every 22 years. Either way, there's definitely a pattern. You get a lot of highs and a lot of emissions, in certain regions and then you get a lot of lows in between them. And that means we expect some kind of a major emission, like a Miyake event, to possibly happen somewhere around the solar cycle very close to its peak. Yet none of the events seem to correlate with any of the peaks of solar cycle. As a matter of fact, all of them seem to appear when the cycle was much weaker than usual, which would mean that it's definitely not a solar flare and unlikely to be some kind of a coronal mass ejection. By the way, the one that we just witnessed not so long ago, the video about this is in the description, did happen when we were approaching the solar cycle maximum. The cycle we refer to as cycle 25. And so the only agreement all of the scientists have so far is that it has to be something astrophysical, but nobody really knows what. Some studies have even suggested possibly some kind of a neutron star or a magnetar, maybe some kind of a gamma ray burst, or maybe a passage of a comet. At least one paper from China implied that maybe all of this is caused by some kind of an airburst from a distant comet that was observed in 773. And this could deliver a lot of extra nitrogen and also a lot of extra carbon-14, which could then be deposited in coral and trees. And so could this be from comets? Well, it's possible, but no comets were detected in other events, especially the one in 993. And also the actual date doesn't really align very well, it's at least two years apart. On top of the fact that explaining this as a kind of a cometary event does not really have a lot of scientific evidence at all. We don't really know if carbon-14 is elevated in comets and if any of this makes any chemical sense. However, all of these events seem to be kind of similar in terms of how they progress. They all seem to start very suddenly, very often lasting for at least one year, and then gradually disappearing over time. This can take anywhere from 10 to 20 years. Although some of these events might have lasted for at least three years. If this was coming from the sun, it's unknown to us why it would do so. No current scientific model can actually explain how a multi-year event like this can occur and can then be deposited as carbon-14. But there are maybe some hints, specifically hints in regards to the magnetosphere. It's actually quite possible that all of this has something to do with the magnetic field of our planet. Maybe the magnetosphere of planet Earth changed, with a change lasting for several years. And specifically, some of these high energy particles can actually become trapped inside the magnetic lines of the planet for a pretty long time, eventually sort of dribbling down into the atmosphere over several months or several years. And this could explain the elevated production of carbon-14 at least to some extent, it's just never really been seen physically. Likewise, the other explanation involves the sun. Maybe the sun itself decreased in power instead of increasing, and by decreasing its overall emissions, this would decrease the power of the heliosphere, allowing a lot of other cosmic rays from the outside to come into the solar system itself. And this is actually really important because right now, 
The Sun's overall magnetosphere sort of protects the inner solar system from a lot of radiation from the outside. And so even though our Sun does produce occasional flares and occasional really massive emissions, if it wasn't for our Sun, we would be getting a lot more cosmic radiation coming from the galaxy and the universe itself. And so if the heliosphere decreased in size, and if for some reason the Sun's magnetosphere decreased as well, it's possible that maybe the carbon-14 levels would increase as well as the actual cosmic rays from outside of the galaxy increase their influence on the upper atmosphere. So, yet another explanation, but once again, no actual proof. But independent of what exactly caused this, these are still extremely interesting for modern science, especially if these are a result of very powerful radiation coming from the outside, and especially if these are a result of a magnetic storm from the Sun. If this is from the Sun, and if it's about 10 to 20 times more powerful than even the Carrington event, well, that would be a major concern for modern electronics and pretty much the entire modern society. However, if it's a result of the Sun becoming weaker, or a result of some kind of a comet, it's unlikely to have any effect on our society, but it's still a very interesting scientific question that needs to be resolved. And so whatever these events are, it's quite likely we're going to be talking more about them as the scientists discover more and more. For now, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.